What's going on y'all? I'm washing dishes and I just was like, let me go on and do this video real quick. I'm going live and in this video, I'm titling it, titling it Y'all Are Dating. And the reason I'm doing this is based off of the video that I did yesterday where I was discussing how, in my opinion, my generation and younger generations, I'm a millennial, I'm about to be 30, I'm getting up there. Um, and between millennials and Gen Z's, in my opinion, we have this really childish, immature outlook when it comes to dating and relationships in the sense that so many of us will call it everything but what it is. And what I mean by that is y'all will be in a y'all will be dating people and won't even call it dating. Instead, it's we're talking yet you're dating. OK, and I'm so over this jumping around the bush to avoid exactly what we are doing with each other. OK, I'm not having sex with somebody, going out to eat, going for drinks, spending time with somebody, going on romantic get togethers at the damn beach and park, making out, doing all of this stuff that you do when you're dating and then saying that it's not dating. I'm not with that immature, childish, toxic mess, and I'm over the BS, okay? I am so over the BS. So the reason why I'm making this live is a lot of us have been in this situation. Now, let me clarify. Every millennial doesn't act like this. Every Gen Z doesn't act like this. And keep in mind, older generations dealt with the same problems and issues that we're dealing with, okay? This problem of calling it everything but what it is also took place with Gen X, with baby boomers, with the silent generation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, in my opinion, due to the internet, due to social media, this problem is heightened. OK, because now it's right in your face. People brag about having these relationships without calling them relationships and people get off on it. I also feel like we live in a very narcissistic society, very self-centered, um, very just egotistical out to get what I need for me. Screw everybody else. And everybody's basically manipulating, lying and using the other person to get whatever energy, support, whatever you need out of that person. And then once you get what you want, you kick that person to the curb, you throw them to the trash, they're discarded. And a lot of us have basically been dating narcissistic people. I mean, it is what it is. So based off of what I just experienced, and again, I wanna clarify, I'm not really, I'm not really hurt per se, Am I, am I upset about it? Yes, but I'm not like where I was in 2018 at all. And that's because again, a lot of these situations don't, they, they don't even make it to three months before you're able to spot a lot of the red flags and the inconsistencies and before you're able, uh, for me anyways, before I'm able to cut it off. So in this situation, this past summer, I met this person again on an LGBTQ plus gay hookup app or dating app. But let's be honest, if you're using Grindr nine times out of 10, you're using it because you're looking for sex. You're looking for a booty call, a sneaky link. You're trying to get it in. You're trying to get it in. Let's just keep it real. People aren't using Grindr in general to look for, for actual long lasting relationships. It's literally a hookup app 95% of the time. Let's just keep it a buck, right? So we met on there back in July. This might have been like a week after the 4th of July. Um, so we're literally right almost at the three month mark and I've already cut it off. We met on there, um, exchanged pictures, you know, cause and did some video on the app because again, you don't know if you're talking to a catfish or a serial killer, Jeffrey Dahmer, et cetera. You don't know who you're talking to. So it's really important to video chat and actually take time to get to know this person before you jump into doing stuff. But let's be honest, after a few video chats, we met up. Bang, 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 bang. And it was great. It was a great session, great stamina. 
But that's what I've noticed about a lot of people who have nothing to bring to the table is that they're really good at sex. I mean, that's just it. That's the only thing they're bringing to the table. So of course they're gonna be really good at it. You take sex out of the equation and you will quickly realize this person isn't really bringing anything else, right? Um, however, in this situation, the person was really good at sex, really had good stamina, actually cared about pleasing the partner, me, and then I was making sure that they were pleased because that's my big thing is making sure that we both get off and both have a good time. You know, that's just how I am as a person. Um, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not the greatest person in the world, but damn it, I do my part at trying to make sure that if I'm engaging with somebody, their needs are being met. So it was nice to see that actually being reciprocated, at least sexually. So I was like, you know, that's an A plus in the book for you. You get a gold star. Great. So anyways, we move on from that. And the next thing I know, he's texting again. But it's like actually trying to get to know me and like, let's hang out, you know, you want to come over, watch a movie, play a video game. And then from there it went to, you know, I like going to the parks and the beaches, which I love going to parks and beaches. I love being by bodies of water. Um, but like I said in another video on my GeoFox page, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing while I love videos and or going to the park and going to the beach and bike riding and hiking and all of that good stuff, yes, it's fun and it's cool, but that should, I'm realizing that should not be the only premises of your dating. And again, what I'm noticing with these types, rather they're narcissistic, manipulative, emotionally unavailable, whatever it is, they want to have relationship benefits, but they don't want to call it a relationship. They want to have dates, but they don't want to call it dating. And that's just it. It's a bunch of manipulation, gaslighting, and bullshit. Because you're dating, okay? I'm sorry, but I'm not sitting up making out with people, going out to eat, constantly texting and calling, FaceTiming, hanging out numerous times throughout the month or out the week having sex, doing all of this shit, and then it's not dating. Because that's exactly what it is. But okay, you know, for shits and giggles, let's use the manipulator's terminology. All right, so, um, and mind you, this person is two years older than me. Damn near three, because their birthday is in January and mine's is in October. They're about to turn 33, and I'm just now turning 30, October 15th. Lord willing, ancestors willing universe willing, society willing, okay? So they're damn near three years older than me, which is another thing, like why are y'all so immature at these ages? Like as old as you are, it just doesn't make sense that you still have this childish mindset to me. Here it is, I basically had a life awakening moment when I got played in 2018 at 26. At, you know, I was 25 initially, and then I turned 26 in 2018. So I've been on this self-care journey for over four years now, a little over four years, okay? Because it started in summer of 2018. So now my mindset on relationships, dealing with people, dealing with myself, my relationship with myself, how I view things have completely changed, okay? I don't have time for toxicity, liars, bullshit, and games. And again, these people want to have relationship benefits, but they don't want to have a title. And mind you, I'm very upfront. I say this all the time because it's literally how I am. Um, what's going on, bright blue haze? What's up? What's up? How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you may be. How are you? I'm in here washing dishes right now. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. And then in about 30 minutes or so, I'll be getting ready to get in the shower because I got an appointment with my therapist. Um, but yes, so it's just like my mindset has changed. Like I don't really have time anymore for stupidity and games. 
And like I said, this dude is almost 33 years old and obviously still stuck on stupid. Okay. And then these people think, this is what gets me. These people think that they can run this game on you forever. Like you're just supposed to still be this naive kid, fresh out, you know, fresh out of high school and mess. And they just going to run all this BS on you. So I was up front from day one. I'm single. I'm non-monogamous. And I'm not looking for a committed relationship. I said that from day one. Or I should say, I'm not looking for a committed monogamous relationship. Because honestly, I wouldn't mind having a main partner, but I'm not looking for a committed monogamous relationship, right? This person off rip came into the gate constantly talking about their exes, okay? The entire time it has been the ex. And then it's like, how many exes do you have? That's another thing that's a red flag to me is how people will have a history of failed relationships and then they're always talking about their failed relationships. Rather, it's platonic, romantic, business. I mean, and then this person hops around from state to state, person to person, and then everybody is always doing them wrong. Like apparently he had to sell his house because another ex of his decided that they were gonna move to Arizona. They moved to Arizona, it didn't work out. The relationship went downhill and then they lost the house that they owned. Make that make sense. Then after that, they turned around and got with somebody else, which is the 2014 ex that they're still involved with and you know going through the motions with in 2022. Eight years later, you still stuck on somebody that that doesn't make any sense to me. It just doesn't. And then why are you still hanging out with your exes? And again, anybody that knows anything about narcissistic people, this is their game. This is their gameplay. You know what I mean? They will still be friends with people that supposedly did them dirty. They'll still be in contact with their exes. They'll still be sitting up here having sex with their exes, hanging out with their exes, basically feeding you a bunch of hogwash. Okay, I'm just going to keep it real. Feeding you a bunch of BS. Whole time, they still in connection. Then the other ex that you was with, that you went to New York, then you went to St. Louis, and then when y'all went to St. Louis, things didn't work out, and you had to come back home to mommy. And again, that's another thing that I've noticed. Every story always evolves around you losing all of your possessions, whether it's your house, your apartment, the furniture, the clothes, everything that you've bought, you're always losing. And it's always the other person and how they're doing you dirty and they're cheating and they're lying and they're using you. And then what was crazy was he had this whole conversation about how basically the previous ex, mind you, this person has numerous exes. The previous ex that he was last involved with, right, supposedly wasn't really a bottom. Now, you know, I'm, I'm gay, queer you know, pansexual, depending on the vibe. But for the most part, I'm pretty much a gay queer man, okay? So in the gay community, the bottom is the person who typically receives, okay, is the one being penetrated, okay? So the other ex wasn't a real bottom and, it, and he basically explained how it was basically sword fighting because he was dealing with another cisgendered man who wasn't really a bottom, so they basically would just masturbate with each other and kiss and blah 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 and then the other person wanted to top him and he sees himself as, as a full top so he only penetrates he doesn't he doesn't allow people to penetrate him he doesn't receive anything okay so and then he went into this story last week where he was like yeah this person this ex um would literally hump me 24 7 through the night and I wasn't able to get any sleep and blah, 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 blah. And then I'm sitting here thinking like, that's what you do to me, bro. Like I will be fucking sleep and then you will just be humping me the entire time. Like again, narcissists tell on themselves and then they don't think that you're paying attention. This is why it's so important to just listen. Listen to what they're saying and pay attention to their actions because the people tell on themselves, man. Like. Because we'll be cuddling and then I'll fall asleep and then literally you're humping me.
And that's another thing. You're not dating, but you're sleeping over people's houses. Y'all are cuddling in the bed. You're dating, bro. Like, that's what it is. And again, this is why you have to be really mindful and don't allow them to manipulate you into doing things that you don't want to do or make it seem like this isn't what it is. You're dating. Okay? Like, that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, let me see. It's afternoon here and I'm just working from home. Glad I caught you live. Oh, okay. Good afternoon. And I hope your work day goes well. Uh, I'm on recovery mode right now. Um, it's been a week since I've had my surgery now. So I've been on recovery mode. Um, I'm really just now starting to really truly move around like in the past day or two. Um, because I was basically sleeping and laying down because my incisions and where I got my surgery and stuff, it hurt. It was sore. Um, then I had like a lot, I mean, T, you know, TMI, too much information, but I had a lot of gas and bloating and diarrhea. Um, and then like my arms were sore where they put the IVs at and it was just a lot going on. So I was just laying down basically. Um, I'm just now like, oh, okay, I can wash dishes. Let me do that today. Um, so that's what I'm doing, but I'm still going by doctor's orders, taking it easy. Technically, I can't drive for the next two weeks because it's supposed to be three weeks of me not driving. Um, so, but I hope you have a good day working from home and it goes smoothly for you and it's productive for you. Um, and thank you for tuning in. But yes, um, yeah, so I'm just noticing like all of these red flags. And then like, not only are the exes a problem, but you're also talking about how your ex-friends also did you dirty. And again, how are you always the victim in every situation? Like, that's another thing that needs to be brought up. Like, narcissists always love to play the damsel in distress. And everything they accuse the other person of doing is actually what they did. And it really is starting to make me realize the reason you have to keep coming home back to mommy is because you're toxic. Okay, you probably get up, you get with people, you use them. They get tired of dealing with you and they break up with you. And then you end up losing, as you say, losing everything. Well, you probably didn't contribute to anything. Let's just be honest because narcissists are really good at doing that. Like <laughs> they will use you up. Like I said, I dealt with this in 2018. And another thing is anytime you meet somebody and they come in basically bashing or constantly talking or complaining about their exes, that's a red flag. Obviously you haven't moved on because you're still bringing them up. And that doesn't really make any sense, especially somebody from damn near a decade ago. Now, another thing that got me was, now mind you, were there positives? Yes, the sex was good. He, he was caring. He didn't mind being seen in public with me. He was open and out in the sense of he wasn't in the closet and on the DL, so that was pretty dope. Um, he did assist me with a situation, uh, with a tire, helped me get a tire. Uh, but when you look at what happened, I my tire got on flat coming to your house, pulling in your driveway. So quite frankly, yes, I'm thankful and grateful that you assisted me with that, but this would have never happened if I would have never came over here. Because, I mean, who just has random metal sharp things laying in their driveway? Anyways, that's a whole nother video. Um, but again, very thankful and grateful for that. Because you know what? He didn't have to do that. But he did. So that was dope. Um, and he helped me with that situation. And I do appreciate it. Um, but it's just I was spotting all of the inconsistencies. Then the situation where we... Um, we're having sex and mind you, I use condoms. Like I'm really big on condoms, prep, pre-exposure prophylaxis, getting tested on a regular basis. At the bare minimum, I get tested at least once every three months. And if I'm having more than one sexual partner or I've been engaging in more risky sexual activities, I get tested a few times. So sometimes I get tested every month. It just depends on what I'm doing. 
Um, but this person like randomly didn't have a condom, didn't tell me that they didn't weren't, weren't using a condom and basically stealthed me. So I had to go and get tested. Thankfully, I don't have anything, um, but I didn't consent to that. So it's just a lot of little things where I'm just like, yeah, I don't have time. I'm oh, not little things, a lot of big things, a lot of red flags where I was just like, I don't have time for this. And then I just noticed, again, you don't want to call it dating when that's exactly what we're doing. Okay. You're very um, clingy. That's another thing that I've noticed. And again, I dealt with this in 2018. Narcissists, when they're in that love bombing phase, when it comes to the dating that they don't want to call it dating, but that's exactly what you're doing. They want to spend all their time with you. They're constantly texting you, sending you memes, wanting to hang out. You want to come over, you want to go to the beach, you want to go to the park, let's go out to eat, let's go do this. And you know, when you're, when you are innocent and thinking, okay, this person has a genuine interest in me and they just want to spend time, you're sitting back thinking, oh, this is cool. Like, sure, let's go out to eat. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. But it's love bombing. <laughs> and again, you'll notice it's not going to be consistent because it's fake. They don't really, this is not their real personality. This is not how they really do things. They're just doing the love bombing piece because they're trying to hook you in. They want you to be invested into them. This is what this is all about. Okay. And it's just ridiculous. And then my thing is, if you're stealthing me and wanting to have unprotected sex with me, then how many other people are you having unprotected sex with? Then you wonder why STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, STIs, sexually transmitted infections, unwanted pregnancies are spread like wildfire because these are the types of people that we're dealing with. And I'm going to say it. This is, seems to be a cisgendered male situation. They seem to always behave like this and then wonder why nobody likes y'all. I'm just keeping it real. Y'all are fucking predators and I'm just going to keep it real. At this day and age, I view y'all as red flags. You are literally a walking hell no at this point. Okay. Approach with caution. Okay, but anyways, so then you got that whole situation. And like I said, in the video that I did yesterday, and then I did another video like in 2021, the switch up is inevitably going to happen because like I said, they're not going to be able to consistently love bomb you. Sooner or later, the mask is going to drop and it dropped, um, mind you, it, and it dropped when I had the surgery. The last time I saw this person was literally last Wednesday. Now, this is what I also notice when you're dealing with narcissists. Anytime you have like health issues, something major takes place, they go ghost or they fall back because that's just it. They don't really care about you. And someone that cares about you, you just had a surgery, is going to want to check in. Like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Do you need anything? This person did it like once or twice and then proceeded to basically be MIA the entire weekend. And then when they did hit me up over the weekend, it was to talk about their ex. Here it is. I'm literally in bed on bed rest from a major surgery and we're spending the entire time talking about your ex from 2014. And I was like, instead of, and the thing was, I wasn't like angry, bitter, mad, or hurt about it. I just straight up told him yesterday, hey, I'm giving you space because obviously you need time to heal and focus on you. And honestly, maybe you should reconnect with your ex. And I kept it just like that and I sent it in a text. And then I don't understand why you're all bent out of shape about it because according to you, we're not dating, so it really shouldn't be a bother that I'm giving you space. But you'll notice with these types, they want the relationship benefits without calling it a relationship. That's really what it is. They want the dating. They want to go on dates, but they don't want to call it dating. And like I said, this is too much of a repeat of what I dealt with in 2018, where this person, I was dealing with this person um, and we basically were dating, but he didn't want to call it that. And yeah, I don't, I don't have time for this anymore. So I just exit stage left early on because I'm not about to do boyfriend, 
lovey-dovey relationship shit with somebody that I'm not in a relationship with. I'm not about to waste my own time. Again, they want to they want you to provide emotional labor nonstop, yet they don't want to do that for you. Uh, and it's just very one-sided and you just see the bullshit. You see them pulling back. Now they're going a day to two days or however long without talking to you. This is like the mini discard phase that a lot of narcissists participate in. A lot of toxic, dysfunctional, emotionally unavailable, manipulative ass people do. And like I said, this seems to be a cis male situation. They love to treat people like this. And then they're mad because people are waking up and smelling the damn coffee. Like we see the bullshit now. Like we're not falling for the okie dokes. We're not falling for the games anymore. You know, like I said, if this was 2018, 2017, 2016, you would have had my ass. I would have been sad, depressed, potentially suicidal. You know what I mean? Now I'm just like, dodged a bullet, saw this coming, I'm out. Oh, and another thing is how he kept like trying to get me to follow him on Instagram. And like, that's a big thing with me. I don't care to follow people on social media. Again, for what? Been there, done that. A lot of this, follow me on social media when you're dealing with these types of individuals is so they can have surveillance. So they can literally watch everything that you're doing. Been there, done that. Not interested. And I don't need to know what you're doing 24 seven. Again, they're also very codependent. They're very clingy. Like, it's just ridiculous. And I just don't have time for that. And when you see through it, it's just like, Oh, this is about to be, this is literally about to be a redo of 2018. Like I was seeing through all of it. So I just basically told him like, look, I'm giving you space. Um, I want to try to read the text messages verbatim of what I sent. Because like this could potentially help other people. Because like, trust me, I, I know how it feels, y'all. And yes, I still wash my dishes by hand because I don't have a dishwasher here. And I could install one, but I'm on leave. I'm not supposed to be lifting over 10 pounds, so obviously I won't be doing that right now. But yeah, I still wash my dishes by hand. Um, I like to clean. It's like some of the things that I like to do, so it's not a big deal. But, um... It's just, it's really something, to, it's just wild to me how like they, our generation, millennials and Gen Z's, and don't get me wrong, other generations participate in this, okay? And everybody in this generation, whether they're millennial or Gen Z, isn't like this. But like if I'm getting to know you and I'm, I'm going on dates, like we've went out to eat, we went to the park, we go to the bar, we're cuddling in the bed. Like, you're dating. That's what you're doing. But again, with these types, they want to manipulate you into thinking that this isn't what it is, and that's exactly what it is. And when you're able to spot the red flags and just move on with your life, this is another reason why I'm going to keep saying this. Talk to multiple people at once because you're not in a committed relationship. This is another thing that narcissists are really good at doing. They will literally hijack your time. They're very clingy. Have you thinking that something is really going on when it's not? They're just using you. And a lot of times you're a rebound. You're a rebound because they just left the X supply or the old supply that they were using. Again, like I said, this person came back to Michigan in January of this year after leaving St. Louis with uh, from their ex. And mind you, this person, like this was like what? July, August when he was discussing how his ex from St. Louis had came back to drop off clothes for him. And I'm like, okay. And then like all of a sudden last week, he was discussing how he had went over his friend's house and like one of his exes from 2014 lived there. So I'm just like reading through the lines like, okay, and mind you, I'm non-monogamous, so I don't really care that you're talking to other people. I don't really care that you're talking, you're still in contact with your ex. The problem is every single conversation is about your ex. 
And the problem is every situation that you've had, whether it's platonic or romantic, it's always a like traumatic story of how they played you and they lied to you and they hurt you and you lost this and you lost that. And it's like you're always the damsel in distress. And it's giving it's giving victim mentality. It's giving covert covert narcissist, user and liar and manipulator at this point, bro. And again, you met the right one because I will exit stage left and not and act like you don't exist. It's nothing for me to do. You know, I mean, I'll be the first to say I have a very much dismissive avoidant attachment style, which is why I'm in therapy and I've been in therapy for over three years. And I, I take ownership on that, right? Like I know my problems. I know I have issues. Unlike you, I'm not coming in here making it seem like I'm some perfect little angel and I do no wrong. And I'm always the victim because I'm not always the victim. Sometimes I cause problems. I've hurt other people, but that's just it. Every time he's talking about his exes or his ex friendships, he's never saying what he did. It's always what the other person did. So another thing, that's a red flag. I'm just gonna be honest. Like as you get older, you start spotting these issues. You start paying attention to the obvious inconsistencies and this is straight up bullshit. And like I said, they don't think that you're gonna be able to catch on. They think they're gonna be able to keep feeding you hogwash and you're just gonna keep slopping it up like the pig at the pig trough. That's really how they view us. And like I said, you're dating, okay? And when you find yourself in these situations, you need to just straight up tell them like, look man, look woman, look person, look sis, look. I'm not about to be doing relationship stuff with you and all of this and you're sitting up talking about we're just hanging out or we're just talking because you don't just cuddle with people you hang out with. You don't just make out with people you hang out with. You don't just have sex with people you hang out with. If it's a booty call, if it's a sneaky link, keep it at that. We don't need to be going out, getting food, cuddling, kissing and all this other shit if that's all we're going to be doing. Keep it at that. And this is what I mean by you have to have boundaries. And you'll notice with narcissistic, dysfunctional folks, they don't have boundaries. This is why they're able to say that they're sleeping with their friends. I'm just being honest. They just go and do all of this mess and then expect you to be okay with it. And then when you do question it, then they'll turn around and make it seem like you're, you're attacking them or you're asking for too much, yet they're the ones that's putting this whole game on. So, A. Now, I told him, like I said, I think you need space. You need to heal and focus on you. And hopefully you can reconnect with your ex. Um, and then, hey, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But I'm not about to waste my time with you. I wish you best. I wish you well. I wish you success. But I'm not going to be sitting up going back and forth with you. You 32 years old. Grow the hell up. You about to be 33 years old in, in less than three months and you still sitting up here playing the same childish ass games. So yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, and I'm glad that I was able to move on and see through the BS early because a lot of people, unfortunately, they will spend years going back and forth, being pulled back and forth into this mess. And no, I learned my lesson in 2018, and now I don't have time. And also, I'm so glad as a intersex, transgendered man, I got my hysterectomy, because that's another thing when you're dealing with cisgendered men who are narcissistic and toxic and dysfunctional. They use children to trap you. They purposely will get you impregnated, knock you up, because they know if they knock you up and you become pregnant, that is going to allow them to come in and out of your life and have access to you for at least 18 to 21 years. And let's be honest, until one of you die, you're always gonna have some type of connection to that person because you literally created a human being with them. So yes, do yourself a favor, use condoms, Get on birth control. I hope y'all vote in these elections coming up next month, November 8th, you know, general elections, because reproductive health, reproductive rights and freedom is on the chopping board 
abortion access, all of that, uh, bodily autonomy, all of that is on the chopping block. But for real, they will use children as anchor babies so they can keep coming in and out of your life. And they don't want to be fathers. They don't want to be. And that's another thing. He would keep talking about, you know, how he thought he had got somebody pregnant when he was a teenager. And he doesn't know for sure if he has a kid or not and all this other mess. And then he would keep saying, oh, well, I don't really want kids, but I think I would be a great father and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just sitting here in the back of my mind like, nigga, you're not about to trap me. And so I made sure of that. Snip, 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 snip. I made sure of that. You're not finna mess up my life and have me sitting up basically uh, re uh, repeating what happened to my mom. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm not doing that. You know, and I made sure of that. Break the generational curse. Break the cycle. Okay? Protect yourself. Because if you notice, these are the same people who don't want to use condoms, but at the same time will be quick to tell you that baby ain't mine. Yet they willingly ejaculated in you. And in my case, stealthed my ass. And technically stealthing is rape. I didn't consent to unprotected sex with you. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. You know, but that's a whole nother video. Um, but yeah, it's just like, you'll notice like all of this crazy shit that be taking place with these types and they don't think that you are paying attention. That's why I said a lot of times, let them talk. Let them show you and let them tell you. Their actions will speak louder than their words. Um, what? I, look, look, bright blue haze. You know, I'm just keeping it real. It's like they will trap you. And then if you are not a, uh, a person that can get pregnant, if you're not a cis woman, if you're not an intersex man, if you're not a trans man, you're not a trans masculine person. If you are a cis man, if you are a trans woman, um, an intersex uh, woman, etc. If you have a penis, people can still trap you. They will purposely take the condoms off and stealth you. They will purposely get pregnant so they can trap you. So pay attention. These types of people will literally sit up and purposely get impregnated and or get you pregnant to trap your ass. And it is what it is. They ain't thinking about you. They is sitting up using that child as an anchor baby so they can keep coming back and forth in your life playing games. So it's just once you spot the red flags, honor that. When a person shows you who they are, take it for face value. So I'm sitting up here giving people numerous opportunities to play in your face because you're the one that's going to end up hurt at the end of the day. You're the one that's going to have to rebuild yourself when this situation is over. And it can be highly avoided by paying attention to the early red flags, to the inconsistencies, to the blatant lies and manipulation. And like I said, coming in, wanting all of this relationship, bull, this BS, but yet not calling it for what it is. You're dating. We basically dated for three months. And I was able to see through you numerous times. And now I don't got time for it. You showed your ass this past week, baby. So that's that. And it's just funny to me how one... Like I said, anytime you have a serious issue, they show their ass. Like narcissists, it's just something about it. They don't know how to care for other people because everything is about them. Here it is. I, I don't had a whole damn procedure, a whole surgery. And you sitting up here talking about your ex and how he done went to jail and the U-Haul truck. And I don't know if somebody got hurt and you texting me at five in the morning talking about how you got to go up to the jail to see if you can bail this person out and... Here it is. I'm sitting up on bed rest out of a surgery. Like it's just now been one week last Tuesday since I've had the surgery. And this is the shit that you're doing. Like, bro, you showed your ass. So I'm, I'm real good on you. Um, Again, they do not think that you are going to catch on to the bullshit. That's what be cracking me up. They really think they're going to continue to play these games and you're just going to sit around and take it. But you met the right one. You met the right one, and I have gone on. I don't care. I'm going to be honest. It's easy to exit stage left when you're not overly invested in the situation. 
And it's also easy to exit stage left when you are single. You know you are single and you are talking to other people. See, because, and I said this in the other video, this is gonna sound mean, this is gonna sound vulgar, but dick is a dime a dozen. It's everywhere. Ain't nobody finna be sitting up putting a bunch of emphasis and that's the only thing you bring into the table is sex, bruh. Cause you're not bringing nothing else. You know what I mean? Let's just keep it real. You know, you're not bringing nothing else. And again, like I said, a lot of these types, that's the only thing that they're good at. Because take sex out the equation. And that's another thing. So with this procedure that I had, I had a laparoscopic hysterectomy. I can't have sex for 8 to 12 weeks. It all depends on how your body heals and if you get the okay from your doctor. Right? Like, I can't lift more than 10 pounds. <laughs> so um, it is what it is. So with that being said, I kind of knew in the back of my mind, like, I kind of knew like, okay, he's probably going to fall back because you really are only here for the sex in the first place. And you showed that. So, hey, and then I had another person hit me up. I want to say that was Saturday or Sunday, hit me up and was like, what you doing? And this is like one of those people that only comes around for sex. And I just was like, bro, I just had surgery. I won't be talking to you for at least three months. So see you next year. <laughs> Like, I'm just so over people who are just fake users and just, it is what it is. Um, so, I don't got time anymore. Like, I'm about to be 30. Like, literally, in nine days, I will turn 30, Lord willing, ancestors willing, universe willing, society willing. I don't have time anymore for bullshit. And it is what it is. Um, I'm about to hop my butt up on in the shower. Get ready to put these dogs outside so they can run around and do them again before I leave. But information on people who are narcissistic when it comes to dating and then like this generation, millennials and Gen Z, and how we act like we won't call things for what it is. You're dating. Okay? It's dating. This, this whole, oh, we're in a talking stage. Talking is dating. <laughs> Y'all kill me with that. I'm sorry, but if we sitting up going out to eat, kissing and making out, having sex, going for drinks, going places, always, you always want to hang out, always want to talk, always want to text, you're dating. Miss me with that BS. I don't got time for this anymore. I'm not a little kid. I'm not a child. You are dating. Anyways, I'm out. Y'all have a good day. And you know me. I'm a, uh, I've, I've always wondered why so many couples split right after consent. Exactly. Because a lot of the time, that person did not care about you. They were using you. And they purposely got you impregnated or, uh, or, got, uh, or purposely got pregnant so they could hook, line, and sinker you. A lot of these relationships are fake and phony. Let's just keep it real. And to me, I'm going to do a whole nother video on my other channel, GeoFux, that YouTube channel, uh, where I discuss uh, cis-het normativity and how a lot of what cisgender heterosexual people do, in my opinion, is very compulsory in the sense of you're just doing it to do it. You don't really want kids. You don't really want a monogamous relationship half the damn time. You're just doing it because this is what has been shown to you. You've been taught that you're supposed to, you know, get older, especially if you are a woman. You're supposed to wait till you get married to have sex. You're supposed to save your virginity, get married, and basically be a baby incubator. Because let's just keep it real. And you're supposed to be Betty Crocker home, uh, home, he home wife. And that's it. And it's just very compulsory. Like there's no real thought process behind this. And a lot of people do this and find out very quickly this is not what they wanted. You have a lot of people right now stuck in miserable ass marriages because this is what happened to them. You got a lot of people now who have children with people they absolutely hate because this is what happened to them. And let's just keep it real. All we got to do, a lot of us, a lot of us, all you got to do is look at your own family. Look at your own parents. Look at your grandparents. Look at your aunts and uncles. You will see it for yourself. These people don't like each other. Hell, and then like I said, you got these, these dudes who don't want to be fathers, yet keep having unprotected sex with everybody. 
Make it make sense. You don't want kids, but you keep willingly having unprotected sex and ejaculating in people. You don't want STIs and STDs, but you keep having unprotected sex and ejaculating in people. And again, it all boils down to control, manipulation, toxic masculinity, misogyny and sexism, and patriarchy. It's all about control. These people ain't thinking about you. And not to mention, a lot of these narcissists, they're jealous of you. They don't really like you like you think you do. They're jealous and envious and they want to hurt you. They want to cause problems and they want to bring issues to you. And a lot of these dudes, they know if they get a woman pregnant, that's going to pretty much ruin her life or throw her off her track. Let's just keep it real. They don't really like you and they want to hurt you. So let's just be honest, okay? And it's the same thing with a narcissistic woman if she's dealing with a man. She knows that his life is on a, on a positive trajectory. He's got a job or a career. He's doing things with his life. He's going somewhere. And she knows if, he get, if she gets pregnant, that's going to potentially ruin his plans and throw him off of his track. They know what they're doing. Why else are you out here having unprotected sex? Let's just keep it real. You know what you're doing. So that's why I'm like, look, y'all, we, you know, most of the people who watch my videos are at least 25 and up. So we are grown and it's time for us to start taking accountability and being responsible for our own bodies and lives instead of sitting up here acting like we didn't know what was going on because we getting too old. You feel me? Um, and those of you that are under 25, I hope these videos are able to help you avoid going through this mess because it's highly avoidable. It really is. Information will be in the description box below. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you continue to have a good day. Be safe and I am out.